Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing our journey in the world of serendipity books and looking at Glitter by Baby, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Front cover caption, sometimes love forces us to make difficult choices. And look at the eyelashes on those horses. Whew, they were very well rendered this time. Mm-hmm. Dedication. Dedicated to all the children of Redding, California. Through their ears, I listened to the wind singing through the pines and found the place called Wing Song, a magical place where anything can happen and your dreams come true. Stephen. Lucky kids. An entire city worth of kids got a dedication in a book. If you listen to the wind as it whispers through the pines, you will hear a simple, gentle melody. A whispery song about a magical land called Wing Song. If you close your eyes and listen with all your might, you can see this magical place. Wing Song, where everything is real and dreams come true. A place of tall, stately pines and high granite cliffs. A place where butterflies dance. A valley of magic and wonders. Wing Song. As the wind swept through this magic land like a velvet fog, it lifted all things to greater heights. From a dried brown leaf to a magnificent butterfly, all things flew higher when they listened to the melodies of wing song. Amidst this majesty of light and lively winds lived a most beautiful little winged horse called Flutterby. I think we've met before. She flew on wings that knew all of wing song. She soared so high she could touch the sky, and then, like an eagle, she would swoop down to tip her wings in the cool crystal ponds. Nice picture. Yes, of Flutterby taking a nice little dip of her wings into the pool. Very nicely rendered water, and the wings are very well done, along with the definition I've mentioned before with the muscles. Mm-hmm. Even with all of this beauty and wonder, Flutterby was lonely. It was hard enough to talk to, let alone understand, butterflies. And beyond those little creatures, there was no one. No one to talk to at all. Okay, these books are obviously not canonically connected. Apparently. Because in Flutterby, she was the only little winged horse. And in Flutterby Fly, there were lots of winged horses that herded the butterflies about. Mm -hmm. And she could talk to the butterfly, and the chipmunk, and the raven, and the old monarch butterfly who lived at the base of the tree. Also, the scale keeps changing. She's bigger in this book. You think so? And this is a really small horses. One day, out of loneliness, Flutterby flew higher than she had ever flown before. Higher than the stately pines, and higher than the granite cliffs higher and higher, until she had flown beyond the magic of wing song for the first time in her life. Finally, she was so high that she was in a place where nighttime touches the sky. She gazed about and saw a small, isolated meadow far below. She looked and looked again. She saw a herd of horses. She dropped like a snowflake, swirling quickly to the ground, and landed with a gentle click of her heels right in the middle of the herd. They looked at her and she looked at them, for these were not the winged magical creatures of wing song, but rather miniature mortal horses. Miniature mortal horses. Miniature mortal horses. Hmm. The herd was a bit skittish at seeing this winged beauty and backed away in nervous wonder. Finally, the leader of the herd, a beautiful stallion called Black-Eyed Pete, inched closer and closer until he was nose to nose with Flutterby. With a whoosh and a snort, they shared a bonding of breath. Then, as if nothing had happened out of the ordinary, the herd welcomed Flutterby to their meadow and went back to their gentle grazing. All the herd, that is, except a beautiful stallion called Black-Eyed Pete and a blushing winged filly called Flutterby. I mean, definitely horses, definitely not ponies. Not, not with that composition. Mm-hmm. The stallion, with black mane and tail flying and head held high, 
would race about the meadow, bucking and jumping. For no reason at all, he would leap high in the air and kick at a butterfly or reach for the sun. For it could be said that Black-Eyed Pete had fallen head over heels in love with the little gray-winged mare. Okay, last page she was a filly, now she's a mare. They grow up so fast. <laughs> yes, between pages. Flutterby felt the same way. She had never seen anything quite so magnificent as Pete. She would trot about the meadow with her tail held high, her flashing blue eyes following the stallion wherever he went. The sacred bond and magic of love had united the flying horse Flutterby and the dark stallion Black-Eyed Pete together. Forever. The way you said that last one was kind of ominous. Sometimes love forces us to make difficult choices. Married by this magical meadow in the bloom of summertime, they spent their time together sharing the tender bits of grass and flowers that grew in great profusion there. Sometimes, in moments of great joy, Flutterby would flutter her wings and soar high in the sky. For the most part, though, she was contented to be near her meadow mate. Oh, the way his mane falls there, he almost looks slightly more draft horse to me. Mm. And her wings definitely look smaller. Yeah, definitely smaller. As summer wore on, Flutterby began to notice that she was gaining weight, but simply thought she was just eating more and flying less. As fall dropped its leaves and waited for winter's mantle of snow, it became harder and harder for Flutterby to fly at all. I've got to lose some weight or I shall never fly again, she thought to herself. Flutterby would run and run, and when she was running as fast as she could, she would reach out her wings and try to lift herself off the ground. She would start to soar, but then the weight became too much, and she would skid across the ground like a leaf caught in a whirlwind. That is a very determined expression. Yes, it is. Now that I get a closer look at it. Her dappling is across more of her body, though, this time. Hmm. Can't really see it in the shot where she's dipping her wings in the water, but she's definitely more dappled than she was in the other two books. Assuming all Flutterbys are the same Flutterby, even though there seems to be no canonical connection. Mm -hmm. Or almost no. As she lay there in a tangle of wings and legs, she wondered out loud, Why can't I fly? A laughing whinny broke her concentration as an old gray mare helped her to her feet. I'll give you folks a moment to uh, run the song through your head. It seems, my little Flutterby, that you are going to have a baby. Winged horses who are pregnant can't fly, for their own safety as well as the child's. And they know this how? The herd of mortal horses that apparently has never seen a winged horse before? Yeah, apparently. Flutterby was overjoyed. A baby, a child, a foal, what delight! The old mare continued, Wait, you will have a hard decision to make. You cannot remain here in a mortal meadow for long after the foal is born. For if you stay, you will die. Um, okay. That's kind of a big thing to go, boom! Yeah. Yeah, so... First, you're pregnant. Second, you're going to die if you stay. How do they know this? And what difference does giving birth to a foal make in her ability to live outside the magic of Wingsong? Or did she just have X amount of time and shortly after the foal's born, the time was going to run out regardless? Yeah, just, I'm just trying to figure out why? I don't think there is a why. Okay, let's continue. Saddened by the news of having to leave her beloved black-eyed Pete, Flutterby said, If what is to be is to be, then when the child is born, we shall fly together back to the magic of Wingsong. Maybe you want to consult with the father who doesn't even know you're pregnant? Ah, said the old mare, there are two sides to every coin. Because Pete is mortal and you are magic, the child may or may not be able to fly. If it is able, then it may fly away with you. If not, the child must stay here in the mortal meadow. Flutterby wandered and waited wishing for her child to be born with strong wings. Also, I'm still trying to figure out why. Mm-hmm. I know there's like consequences to everything, but... It seems a little heavy for getting pregnant. Yeah. To the stallion that the book states you're married to. So this is a consecrated union. Mm-hmm. 
In springtime, Flutterby folded in a burst of starlight. The child was born. As the sun sparkled across this meadow of mortals, it splashed upon a resting Flutterby, a proud stallion called Black-Eyed Pete, and a gangly little filly they called Glitterby Baby. Flutterby looked over the flanks of the tiny foal and saw wings that were very, very small. Heartened by hope and desire, she thought quietly to herself, the wings will grow in time. They must. They must. Also, how short of a time does she have? I think she said shortly after, but that doesn't, that, that can vary? Yeah, so how, how long is shortly, and do we get any warning signs? Mm -hmm. Glitterby grew, but with each day, Flutterby became sadder and sadder. The wings didn't seem to be any bigger. But the baby was healthy and strong and would gallop on wobbly legs about the meadow, chasing shadows in the wind. One day as the child lay sleeping, Flutterby unfurled her wings and lifted up into the sky. It felt so good to fly again, to feel the cool breezes brush her mane. Her reverie was short-lived, for suddenly she heard a terrified scream from below. She swooped down beside the startled foal, who had become frightened when her mother flew away. Flutterby soothed the tiny horse with a gentle nuzzle of her nose, and the words of the old gray mare echoed in her mind. If the baby cannot fly, she must stay here in the mortal meadow, and you must go to Wingsong alone. That is a sad-looking filly. Mm-hmm. One day, the entire herd gathered in the middle of the meadow with Flutterby, Glitterby, and Pete. It is time, said the old mare, to see if Glitterby can fly. With a bit of coaching from her mother, the little filly galloped to the other end of the meadow. Then, with a flick of her tail, she ran as fast as she could to the center of the meadow and tried to fly. She leaped high into the air, but she did not fly. Instead, she skidded in a heap right in the middle of the herd. Flutterby helped her to her feet, and off she went to try again, and again. But no matter how hard she tried, she could not fly. Flutterby knew that she would have to leave the child with her father, Black-Eyed Pete. With tears streaming from her eyes, she nuzzled Glitterby and told her that she must stay with the herd in the mortal meadow. The little foal could do nothing but cry as she stood in the shadow of her father. Flutterby knew that the longer she put it off, the harder it would be, so she spread her wings and leaped for the sky. The little foal, Glitterby, ran around and around the herd shouting, Mother, don't leave! Mother, don't leave! It was to no avail. Flutterby flew higher and higher into the sky, blinded by the tears in her eyes. Very similar, but definitely two different images. Yes, uh, comparing this photo to the cover. So while it does have mother and child together, the cover has Glitterby's muzzle in front, where this page has Flutterby's overlapping Glitterby's. And I don't think it's the worst thing in the world for a child to have to stay with her father. The worst part is that you have to break up the family or die. Mm-hmm. That, to me, is the larger tragedy. And can she visit? Because apparently staying too long in the mortal meadow, but she can't, what, she can't ever come back? Yeah. She was nearly as high as where the night touches the sky, but she could still hear glitter by neighing below. It seemed that she could almost hear more clearly as she flew higher. She looked down for one final glimpse of glitter by before she had to leave for Wingsong forever. Apparently, she isn't allowed to come back. Apparently. There, between a cloud and the meadow, she could see a small bird madly flapping its wings in the wind. She looked again, and then again. It was not a bird she saw, but a little winged horse called Glitterby Baby, determinedly flying with all her might to catch her mother and take her rightful place in the sky. Far below, a beautiful stallion called Black-Eyed Pete sadly walked back to the meadow. Sad, but happy for Glitterby, who was where she wanted to be. Mm. Ouch. Harsh. Also, the wings on that one kind of grew pretty quickly because they were so tiny in the other pictures, and suddenly they're big enough to lift the horse. Yeah, the, the wings shown... Are, like, not, too, not too much bigger than my, like, 
And? They look like snowflake swings, i.e. bulk biceps. Yeah. And then when we get to the final two images, they're much larger. As we look around us, at our mortal side and sigh, remember a place called Wingsong. Then lift your wings and fly. So, what'd you think? This one was always kind of harsh. I don't remember reading it before my parents were divorced. So, it fits very well for children who are having to deal with being from a broken home. Mm. So, yeah. Huge deviations from the first two books that mention Flutterby. Also, very much lack of logic. Why would giving birth to a foal that was sired by a mortal cause her to die if she l doesn't get back to the magic of Wingsong? Yeah, they never explained that. If they would have explained why she would have died, like, the baby takes your energy um, because it's a half-mortal child, so on and so forth. You know, the usual trappings when it comes to mortal immortal. Uh, they just don't say it, and then, you know, saying she has to leave forever. Also, her lack of consideration. She Flutterby just assumes that she'll take the child with her. I mean, um, that, that's something that should have some dialogue going. Mm-hmm. And, and if the old mare knew about that, then doesn't the whole tribe know about that? And why didn't the old mare tell the father? So the whole discussion could be, you know, informed on both sides? Yeah, so that they could make informed decisions. I mean, you can't really make a informed decision about falling in love, but how far you take your relationship and how you're going to handle things. Mm-hmm. Because apparently the old mare knew, and Black Eyed Pete is the leader of the herd. Apparently she doesn't like him or something. Apparently. So, yeah, this is much sadder than the other two books. But if you compare what's written on the front compared to the other two, love forces us to make difficult choices. Excellent lesson. Just the trappings are a little iffy for me. And this has been Glitter by Baby, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed this foray into the world of serendipity. Please check out other books in the series and other videos overall, Ember's Reading Room and otherwise. Feel like shopping or supporting this channel financially in any way? Check out the links below. Amazon and Ebates for shopping and Patreon and Coffee for direct tips and support. Amazon and Ebates are not affiliated with or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.